All right, so welcome. Today we're going to talk about acids and bases, and I'll probably break this into two videos. So let's call this one part one. The first thing I just want to talk about is general properties of acids and bases. Now, some things that you think of when you think of an acid is maybe an acidic fruit, like lemons or oranges or pretty much any fruit. And generally, when we think of acids, we think of a sour taste. Um, sometimes you might even realize that like you can conduct electricity through fruit juices or something. You may think that acids can conduct electricity. And then anything that you may have seen on like cartoons, like maybe if you watch Batman cartoons, the Joker falls into acid and it burns his flesh. Uh, people shoot like acid lasers or something and they burn through metal. So acids can usually react with metal and sometimes steel. Sometimes you do. So they can like burn you and you'll generally see that on things where acids are corroding people or metal and it's just kind of in like the general pop culture. Now bases are a little different. Um, some people think they're healthy because bases generally are referred to as alkaline. And you may think of alkaline water, but honestly that doesn't really hold any weight. Uh, but some main properties of bases is that they're usually bitter. Bases are slippery. So when you feel them, they don't feel so much like water. They feel a bit more slippery. They can also conduct electricity. And also it turns out bases are great at reacting with organic matter. Like flesh and stuff, honestly. If you want to dissolve someone, do it in a very strong base. It'll work really, really well. I mean, acids work well too, but whatever. So with that said, that's some general properties of acids and bases, but I kind of want to get into the chemistry of it. So without further ado, we're going to actually start off with acids. Now, there's certainly different types of acids we think of, uh, bronze lori, Lewis acids, whatever. Um, Arrhenius, you may want to use different definitions of acids, but for the purpose of our class, we're going to think of acids as something that donates hydrogen ions to a solution. So when you have a solution of an acid, you have a lot of hydrogen ions. Uh, this is also sometimes written as H3O plus, because when you have Turns out when you have a hydrogen ion plus water, H2O, you get H3O plus. The proton will just kind of come right in. And I say proton because hydrogen ion is essentially a proton because it's one proton, one electron, but you lose that electron and you get your positive charge, which just means it is essentially itself a proton. So, that's an acid. An acid donates hydrogen ions to a solution. Now, if we look at any solution of acid, so let's take HCl. This is what we would actually refer to as a strong acid. And there's only a few strong acids, but HCl is one of them. And when HCl goes into water, it actually will break into two pieces. It will fully break into H plus and Cl minus. And we just get these free floating ions. So we have these free floating ions. And this also kind of explains why they're so good at uh, conducting electricity. You need ions in water to conduct electricity, and they do that. So acids are going to donate protons, and we'll, or H plus, and there it is, right there. We have our hydrogen just donated straight in. Other acids do this too. So if we look at something like maybe vinegar, so if we look at vinegar, which is H-C2-H3-O2, this will break into 
you guessed it, H plus, and C2H3O2 minus. But vinegar is what we would call a weak acid. And we call it a weak acid because it only, only partially breaks up. So what that means is not all particles will separate. Not all particles will separate into ions. So even if you have one mole of vinegar and one mole of hydrochloric acid, the one mole of hydrochloric acid will produce a lot more H plus and therefore it's a much stronger acid. So if that's if acids donate hydrogen ions, what about bases? So we're gonna quickly shift over into bases. Bases we kind of think of as doing the opposite of adding a hydrogen. What they actually do is they produce OH minus in water. Um, now this is what we call a hydroxide. And you can kind of think of it as kind of like an anti-hydrogen ion. So when you produce OH minus, so if you have OH minus and you have it just floating around in water, well, it turns out if it finds an H plus, those two will react to create more water. So this kind of removes H plus ions from water. So OH minus is really important. It, um, it acts completely against acids, and this is why we get our bases. They produce this OH minus ion that whenever it finds a hydrogen ion, it will react with it and turn into water, therefore removing the H plus from water. So what are some examples of bases? Well, we have, let's, for, let's say for example, NaOH or sodium hydroxide. When sodium hydroxide is put in water, it will break up into Na plus and OH minus. This is what we would call a strong base because it fully breaks up, oops, fully breaks up in water. And yeah, so it's really good at breaking up in water and therefore uh, creating those OH minuses. Now, on the other hand, we do also have weak bases. So let me go ahead and find a, so we can have some weak bases. And with our weak bases, usually these are things that don't necessarily have OH, but create it. So these usually create OH minus. And one example would be ammonia, NH3. When you put ammonia in water, it will react with it to create ammonium, NH4 plus, and OH minus. So it does this partially. It does this partially. So not all ammonia reacts. Not all ammonia and H3 reacts. Therefore, creating some OH minus. So that's why it's a weak base. Well, in our strong base, 
all of it becomes OH minus or every single particle will break into an OH minus and an Na plus with a weak base, only some will produce OH minuses in water. Not all, but some. And so that's what makes our weak base. Very much like weak and strong acids, um, it's a difference between how much of it produces hydrogen ions. Now, how much of it will produce hydroxide ions? All right, the last thing I wanna talk about is our pH scale. Our pH scale uh, actually refers to the power of hydrogen. Because this is all named after hydrogen, the ion that we produce in water. And our pH scale uh, ranges from one to 14. And if we go one to seven to 14, we have this part, which is below seven, which is our acids. This part, which is above seven, which is our bases or alkaline. And then you might be saying, well, what's seven? Seven is neutral. So anything on our pH scale that is below, this will all be acidic. This will all be basic. So here we're gonna have producing hydrogen ions. Here we're gonna have producing OH hydroxide ions. And if we wanna get into the technicalities, we can calculate calculate the pH of a solution by doing the pH equals the negative log of the concentration of hydrogen ions. So we just find out how much hydrogen is in the solution and then do the negative log of that. Um, but we don't need to worry too much about that right now. Uh, what I mainly just want to focus on is the scale and whether or not a solution is one or the other. Now, I'm gonna end this here. And in our next section, we're going to start actually trying to um, react acids and bases and see how they react in different scenarios. So hopefully this helps and have a great day.